Let's turn to chapter 3. Amen. And let's look down at verse 15. Verse 15. The book of Revelation. Do you have it? And it reads as such. I know. Let's go back to 14. And unto the angel of the church of Laodicea, Laodiceans, right. These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou art cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich and white and rainy, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye saw, that thou mayest see. Amen, amen, amen. Just want to focus in on those verses right there. Amen. Tonight I want to talk about making sure. Just want to talk about making sure. Making sure. We tend to think, amen, uh, we thank God for Pastor Black, amen, Ella Sorrell, amen, amen uh, Minister Corrine, amen, amen. Uh, Sister Bessie, amen. amen, and all my brothers and sisters in Christ, amen. amen. We tend to think that we got it all together. But God says, I know your works. So tonight I want to talk to those that are straddle the fence. It's time for us to choose what side we want to be on. It's time for us to choose what side that we want to be on. When I was preparing this lesson, I so many things ran through my mind, and I wanted to share it with you because, you know, I have to examine myself, and because I want to be sure, amen, I want to be sure that, that I'm doing the will of God, amen. I wanted to share with you these thoughts on this lesson, making sure that our relationship with God is intact. It is very important. Because what we do in this world will affect what we spend eternity. John the Baptist came before Jesus Christ. His message was not one that caused people to be uplifted in spirit, but it was a call for repentance. I think we should always check ourselves to see if we are on the straight and narrow. Because there are so many distractions in this world that can cause us to lose sight on God. The parable of the rich man was to let us know that there is a hell and there is a heaven. It needs to be talked about so people can realize that there are consequences for the choices we make. Jesus did not let the rich man go and tell his brothers. He told him in so many words that, 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 that how are they going to believe a dead man? And I got prophets up there that they won't even listen to. You see, the, 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 the ten birds all started out with wine in their lamp. But five got left because they were not prepared when the bridegroom came. You see, that's why we need to make sure that our relationship with Christ is intact. So many, so many think that they can just confess Christ with their mouth and think that they're going to go to heaven anyhow. As long as I come up here and stand before the church and I confess Christ, and they go into heaven anyhow. And they forgot about the part where it says you got to believe in your heart. 
And all they did was just confess Christ. And they went back to doing whatever they were doing before they came up here and confessed. Because in Romans 10 and 9, which you hear me say, let's say that if thou would confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart. And a lot of us ain't doing nothing but, ain't doing nothing but confession. Now, I stand here tonight to, to know, to let you know that I am not one of those people that believe that all you got to do is confess with your mouth. I believe it has to be in your heart. And I do believe that if you are saved, you are not going to be practicing sin, sin and hiding under grace. I believe that if you are in Jesus' hand, nothing and no one can pluck you out of his hand. But the question is, are you in his hand? That's the whole question. We jump on it, but the question is, are you in his hand? Again, we confess, but it's not with our heart. The Bible says that we are supposed to be new creatures. That old things are passed away. I'm just talking about, you know, trying to be sure, making sure. We need to make sure that we are in the right standing with Jesus Christ. We sometimes need to examine and we need to make a checklist of our walk with Christ. Just like we write down what we are going to buy when we go to the grocery store. But good, again, I am not saying that none of you in here is going to hell. I'm just saying that we need to make sure that we, our relationship with Christ is intact. Because at the end of the day, the choice is yours and the decision is yours. Joshua said for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. Right. Making sure a few questions that we as saints, Christians, need to ask ourselves. Am I really saved? And if I am, how do I know? How do I know for sure? Let us pause right there for a minute and just think, how, how do you really know that you're saved? I believe that a change should have come over all of us that say we are saved. We should not want to do the things that we used to do before we confess. There should be a conviction in our spirit when we do wrong. Where is the evidence Am I bearing fruit? Why can't I feel God's presence like I hear people talk about? And where do I go from here? This lesson is a way that we can check ourselves to see if we are walking in the newness of life. And to see if that old nature is still controlling us. In the book of 1 John 2 and 6, the Bible reads, He that saith he abideth in him, of himself also to walk even as he walked. If we be honest and examine ourselves, we know that we haven't totally committed our ways to the Lord. But we all have confessed with our mouth. But was it from the heart? Again, Romans 10 and 9 says, Confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that, that God raised Jesus from the dead. 
And it goes on to talk about that with the mouth is confession is made. And the heart is believed unto righteousness. We must make sure in this very hour that we are saved. I'm not saying you're not, but we need to. Sometimes you, need, you know how sometimes you want to feel on, you get a pain and you want to feel on yourself. Sometimes we need to do the same thing with our salvation. I examine myself all the time because I'm going to tell you sometimes something. The spirit man don't always win. I just read to you where, the, where it says that, 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 that Jesus in the book of Revelation said that we are wretched men. We are wretched. We are, you know, we, 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 you know I know the Bible says we peculiar people. But man, no gender involved, got some low down evil ways. And we have to bring those type of feelings under subjection of the will of God. Y'all, can you think back how you was before you accepted Christ as your Savior? The things that you would say, the things that you would do. And I pray that you ain't still doing those things. I know that that old nation tries to rise, but we must bring it under under subjection to the will of God. Are we still practicing a lot of those same characteristics that we had? Before we accept the Christ, and I know the cliche, I know it, I know it, uh, it's a process, because that's what we hide under. When we continue to do the same thing, now I'm talking about day after day, no, person, it ain't day, I'm talking about year after year. We keep doing the same thing. Our behavior should have changed if we say we are born again. You can't get around that. We should be, and what happens so many times is that, you know, the Bible said, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. And he says, And I, God will give you rest. He said, come learn of me. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden. In this hour, we don't know when, don't know the day, when God is going to call us home. We got to be sure and then when we, we be sure, we got to stay sure. Because Jesus plainly said, first, he said that I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And that where I am, and he says, and if I go and prepare that place, he said, I will come and receive you unto myself. Have we not laid aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us? We've been taught here, and pastor have given the analogy that, that, that in order to really run like you supposed to run when he was a track star, he said he had to get down to the little small shorts and the little shirts so he would move, when the wind wouldn't stop him or hold him back while he's running. And it's the same way with our walk with Christ. You know, I was thinking and I was I was reading, and I think and, and I think I got it in here, but I was reading over in the book of Isaiah today. And it's in the 29th chapter, and it's around about the 13th verse where I begin to read. 
And, 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 and what Isaiah was saying, because we're going to go, we'll go there. But, but, but what he was saying, it got down to about the pot. And it got down to about how the potter was making the jar. And when he made, you know how the potter had that wheel back in those days, see the wheel going and wheel going and gone. And, it, and he's shaking and he's forming. And sometimes there are some excess stuff that falls down. We need to make sure that we ain't the excess. The men and women of God have gotten slack on telling the truth about God's word to keep to keep numbers up in the building, but the finances keep dwindling down. A lot of numbers, but ain't no ain't enough money being raised. And I do get the concept that if you are saved, nothing can pluck you. And I believe that wholeheartedly. Nothing can pluck you out of Jesus' hand. And you are sealed until the day of the river. And why is it possible? Because if you keep reading, it says that the reason that that is possible because God has given them to him. And if you need reference, that's in John the 10th chapter, verses 27 through 29, where it talks about that. So the question lies is, are we in his hand? We all need to be sure. The Bible says that God seeks no his 